Which part of the screenwriting process is most difficult for you? I would say the first draft is the most difficult. Looking at the blank page, you know. Actually, the, the treatment, I always write a treatment before I write a script. And I know that sounds really elementary, but there are people I know who don't really do that. They just want to start writing and see what happens. I'm like, what's going to happen is you're going to have an unfinished script. You know, you're going to get into the third of the way through and realize you don't have an ending, a middle or an ending, and you wasted your time. I mean, I've highly, highly, highly recommend writing the whole thing out as a treatment and make sure it works and make sure it's a feature length piece too. I mean, for me, treatments are always one page of treatment kind of equals like 10 pages of script. That's how my treatments have always worked out. So if I have a, you know, if my treatment is in at least seven or eight pages or nine pages or something, then, you know, you, you probably don't have a whole movie there. But writing the first draft is always the hardest. And just for me, the reason it is is because I want to get everything right the first time. I don't want to do another draft. I want to get every dot, you know, dot the I's and cross the T's and have every the perfect adjectives picked out and the perfect cadence and you know, all this kind of stuff. So I will kind of agonize over that. And sometimes you need to almost just be like, you know what? Like if you come to a scene that isn't working that well, just almost like drop in a, a I, say, I hate to say it, but like a space, like a space saver or something, you know, kind of like a little uh, block and then go to the next scene if you can because then you can come back to that later, you know, and, and, and be more inspired. Maybe you'll be more inspired the next day, but just keep moving through it, you know. And I always write a certain number of pages per day, no matter what. I'm always, that's another discipline thing I kind of picked up, like, after moving here, was because I had to sometimes write scripts very quickly. I had to, like, deliver scripts within a few weeks or a month or whatever it was. So I, I, could, I got a discipline from that. Um, but, but that first draft is always the hardest, yeah. So much easier to rewrite than to write, you know. Are you able to write at home, or do you have to go somewhere? I, I couldn't, I have to write at home. Even if there's construction going on around and there's like whatever noise. I've written so many scripts under like bad, <laughs> noisy circumstances, uh, unfortunately because I have to be at home and I have to be in my environment. Like, I'm not one of those people who can go in a coffee shop and write. I don't know how people do that with all the noise and kind of commotion and, and frankly, other people with laptops and stuff all around you who are probably also writing scripts. It's just kind of, you know, that, those type of environments don't work for me. So I've always written, like I couldn't even, I tried to write a script one time at a friend's house. I was house sitting and I couldn't do it. I left, I called another friend up and I said, can you house sit for this guy? <laughs> Because I can't stand it. I have to go home and be in my place and write this, my script. I can't write it here in his place. So, yeah. <laughs> so I have always, everything I've ever written has been at home, yeah. So was that something you always did, was do the space saver? I've, I've done that more lately. It kind of depends on the script. Like sometimes if it's a script, especially if it's a script you're writing for someone else. Like I was writing... I got this job to write a script for about like a mummy movie for this guy one time. And it was like a mummy on a, it was called, we were calling it mummy on campus for a while, but that, anyway, that wasn't the end of the title we ended up with, but it was a mummy film on a college campus. And there were some scenes where I was like, yeah, I know exactly what I want to do with that. You know, I'm going through the treatment and then there'd be like a part where I'd be like, you know what, I just don't feel like writing that right now. You know, <laughs> like some attack, some action scene or some kind of complicated sequence. It was my fault because I came up with it anyway. But I would just skip over to the next scene, and then I'd come back to that one. So, you know, everybody has their own way of, uh, their own writing technique, I guess. And so I'll do that sometimes. It depends. Um, and so then could you work that out later? Like, you know, what you're waking up, and you're like, I, I just figured out the best way to, like, have the money mummy be in the campus square or whatever. Yeah, a placeholder. Yeah, you put a yeah. placeholder there. Or, or, it might, or it might be for me sometimes. I don't have a hard time writing action. I'm not a big fan of writing dialogue. That's something I don't like. And the directors who I'm a big fan of are not dialogue-oriented directors. Uh, like Walter Hill is one of my favorites. And you know he's always got short, real short lines. The characters don't yak a lot in his movies. So sometimes it'll come to a certain scene, like it, it could be a big dialogue scene or something, and I'll be like, you know what? Depends on where you're at in the day, but I'll be like, I think I'll come back to that tomorrow. Um, or you'll just write some dialogue, and then you'll come back to it and rewrite, polish it. You know, um, 
So, I mean, to me, a first draft is always like, there's a bunch of polishing that goes on in that draft. It's not just a first draft like, oh, here it is done and I just fell right off the table and here it is, you know, it's, there's always a certain amount of polishing that, that you do, you know. Um, and it kind of depends on whether you're writing it for yourself or if you're writing for someone else, because sometimes when you're writing for a producer or some company, you know that they're gonna make a lot of changes to it anyway, and you've been having meetings and you've seen that stuff happening. So that sort of plays into your decisions sometimes too, um, to, you know, how you approach it, <laughs> you know. The guy that saw you in the horror shirts that was picking up mm -hmm. the trash at the, uh, on, on by the craft services table mm -hmm. or whatever, was that your, that was your first rewrite or sort of? Um, yeah, it was my first rewrite because he had the script, I still remember what it was called, it was called Queen of Angels. And it was, it was a, a, I think it was a ghost movie in a hospital, like in a haunted hospital. And he even knew where he wanted to film it. There's a hospital called Linda Vista Hospital uh, that's like been a location for many years for all kinds of movies. And I think we might have filmed there on that show. I can't remember. But anyway, that's what it was. And he, and, and, you know, I just, I don't remember though the details of what I did on it. Like, I think, I don't remember what he wanted me to do with it. You know what I mean? Because it wasn't like it was unfinished. I mean, it was a completed script. I think he just wanted me to maybe like make it scarier. I've had people tell me that before. Make it scarier. Okay. <laughs> different people think different things are scary. So. That's true. So you kind of like, you go through the initial read with it. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would read it. I think on that one I read it and then I, maybe there were certain scenes he wanted me to like pump up a bit, like the horror scenes. Maybe he wasn't that comfortable with the horror scenes. Um, Geez, you know, I, I, I don't remember now, but it was, you know, but he did have a finished script, which the, I've had other jobs where people call me up. I had one gig where a guy called me up to write, to finish his script and, and not only finish it, but write around scenes he had already shot for the movie. So he had like a script. Some of those scenes that were in the script had already been filmed like years ago. And I was supposed to write the rest of it, like kind of like the, I guess for better lack of a better term, he maybe had the beginning and I had to write the middle and the ending. So I did it. Um, but that was weird because not only did I have to match his first act, let's say, I also had to match clips that were shot like in, you know, with these different actresses that were already existing footage, which, you know, for me, I was thinking to myself, or well, how are you gonna match that footage in terms of the shooting? Then you start thinking about the technical end of it and the production end of it. <laughs> but I was like, whatever. So I wrote that. I was just wondering how valuable that one experience where you meet this guy in the most unlikely situation, mm -hmm. that's your first job mm -hmm. in a sense, which is so cool. And mm -hmm. maybe because it was a relaxed thing like that, it mm -hmm. actually helped you more than if it was like, well, yeah, come on in. And then you feel this immense pressure. Oh yeah, no, it was done very casually. Literally, he was, he was literally picking up the trash while he was asking me to do it. And I remember that. And, um, you know, I mean, I just thought that was very flattering and I couldn't believe it. You know, I thought I was the luckiest, luckiest guy in the world, you know, to get to do that. And it was, I was nervous when we went over to Neo, went over to their offices. Cause I was like, wow, I'm in the offices of these you know, this established film company because right. uh, he knew those those guys he knew the producers over there and he probably was trying to push the queen of angels on them um but yeah it was it was cool that it was done so casually and and the subsequent some of the subsequent jobs i did too were also casual and they were very kind of off the cuff like you know just like this guy at this effect shop saying hey i've got some guys looking for a script and do you have anything and i'm like yeah i've got this horror action script, you know, that I wrote on spec that I had, I planned on making in Virginia Beach, which did not happen, but I had it and they optioned it from me, you know, and that was once again done in a very casual, laid back, I think I met with them in like a Starbucks or something and, you know, drew up a short form agreement, so. Yeah, I was just wondering how like some people might pass over certain opportunities because they're not, it's not like this huge like Hollywood, you, what you envision, but how that actually groomed you to then, I mean, you took those opportunities, yeah. you, you saw them maybe yeah. as like, okay, I'll do it. And then yeah. not well, realizing. Well, it's all about, you know, a lot of this, this business is built on give and take and, you know, sort of, you know, people doing favors for each other and helping each other out in different points in time. And I had done work, talking about the option job, I had done work for that effects shop. Uh, I, I knew them 
from that, that background. They helped me out with uh, effects people I needed for my stuff that I was directing. I ended up, they helped me out with that, with the option thing. Then later on they had a script that they, I did like a little rewrite on. So it was always this kind of, you know, we're, we're just hanging out. I mean, this, was, this did not feel like business. You know, it was, but it wasn't. You know, it, it felt more, and I, would, and I wasn't remotely thinking about, oh, this stuff is, is, is too, I'm too good for this stuff. I never thought that. I thought it was cool and fun and, you know, I was having fun, frankly. So, you know, uh, and I was learning a lot too, sometimes without even realizing it. Um, every, every job you get, you learn from. Every script you write, every movie you produce or direct, or whether you instigate it and bring it up from the ground up or you get brought in on it, I mean, you learn on every single one. You know, maybe, maybe that was it. What you just said, you, like you didn't think you were too good for, it, and maybe just seeing that opportunity. I seems like do you yeah, think everybody does that. There's move. There's definitely movies I've directed. Like, and, and so, you know, I'll tell you something. There were people when I first started directing very low budget, micro budget movies who made fun of. There were friends of mine who were my age who were starting trying to get in as well, and they were they would make fun of me. They would make fun of my everything about what I was doing. They make fun of the films I was directing, they make fun of the producer on those, they make fun of everything. Guess what, they're not directing, they didn't direct anything and they never did. They just made fun of me yeah. and tried to denigrate what I was doing. And I, some of those people I just cut them loose to be honest with you. That was one of my first like, things I kind of learned out here was like, not only how to build relationships but also how to get rid of negative dead weight sometimes too. And you know, there's a lot of people that will scoff at things or say, I would never do that. It's like, yeah, don't worry, you won't, you know? <laughs> right. um, you know, like I had a guy who used to say, I would never do a movie for so-and-so. I'd say, yeah, you won't because he's not going to ask you to, you know? I mean, it's easy to say what you won't do, but I don't know. Yeah, I'm not big on turning things down, you know? There's a few movies I've directed that I'm not very happy with or whatever, but, you know, overall... For me, it's hard to take those pieces out of the puzzle because everything leads to, you know, each project sort of leads to the next one. It's, it would be very, very hard for me to just take them all apart and, you know, separate all my work, to separate all my credits or all my, uh, off my resume because there's a line that kind of goes through all of it. Do you know what I'm saying? Usually one thing leads to another. Usually one job does lead to another. And sometimes you have to self-start and, and create your own job, create your own opportunity, that too. Um, but yeah, sitting around saying I'm too good for that or I'm not going to do that and that's not going to get you anywhere. Right, yeah, it's just interesting how all that kind of just then led, you know, and, and some people would have said, oh, this guy, yeah, I'm not going to, you know, oh, yeah, judge friends, him or I whatever. had friends from film school who moved out here who would make fun of, uh, you know, literally make fun of things that people I was working with and make fun of stuff and I was kind of like, you know what, it's, it's, it's okay, just go do whatever you're doing and, you know, um, it's all right, you know, you don't have to do it. You don't, you don't have to be on this project, you know? Um, it's, I don't know, I mean, people have a snobism about them, you know? And um, I haven't seen that getting anybody anywhere, though. And all the people, the directors I know who are like working for years and making things and however they're making them, whatever, they're, they're all self-starters and they're not snobs and they're not, uh, they're all hard workers and they all love what they do. And they've all taken a lot of abuse or grief or had a lot of difficulties over the years, but they still do it. So, you know, I think you kind of make a decision early on in this business is you're going to continue with it or not. Because you, if you don't want to do this, you know, if you don't want to take these lumps, then just get out of it. Because there's a lot easier things you could be doing, a lot more profitable, a lot, you know, a lot easier things you could be doing with your, your life. You know, but I don't feel like I chose it. I feel like it chose me. You know, I, I do. I mean, so. And, and some people are like, I had no idea if there was anything else I wanted to do. This was interesting, but, yeah. you know. I don't, yeah, I, I can't think of anything else I'd rather be doing. I mean, I, I love writing, you know. I, I, sometimes that's my, you know, but that's all bound up in the film, too. So, you know, I do journalism things here and there, but you know what I mean? It's, it's still all connected, so.